Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. Man, nothing is impossible with God. Everything is available to you, but you have to reach out and receive it. Getting a revelation of these foundational truths affects every area of your life. It's not just one particular thing. We don't have to strive and strain to get something to produce. The Word is the incorruptible seed, and the thing is, it can't fail. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. This week, I've started a teaching on healing entitled, God Wants You Well. I've got a book uh, by this title, a study guide by this title, CDs, DVDs, and we've summarized this teaching in a little booklet that is just chuck full of scriptures. And we've seen people healed off of this little booklet. This is our free gift to you. And then we have a USB where I have 12 of my teachings on this one USB. There are, I don't even know how many hours that is, usually six hours uh, per teaching and 12. That would be, what, 70 two hours worth of teaching on here. We've got a healing university. We've got so much material uh, on this that I believe it's just going to be impossible for you to stay sick if you receive it. Psalms 107.20 says, He sent His Word and healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. And I tell you, we're sending this Word to you, and if you will receive it, I believe you can be healed of anything that you're dealing with. That's a huge claim. And you know, there's a lot of religious people that would criticize me for that and say, you're getting people's hopes up. It's not God's will to heal everybody. This is the point that I'm making on yesterday and today's program is that you got to start from this place that it is God's will for you to be well. And there's a lot of people that, again, get mad at me and say, you're going to get people to believing in healing and then they'll be disappointed and they won't see it and their loved one will die and it'll just devastate them. Well, I've got answers to those kind of criticisms, but the truth is what sets people free. And it's the truth that God wants you well. And here's one of the ways that I am just absolutely convinced that it's God's will for you to be well because of what Jesus said. Let me take two examples. I wish I had time to read this whole thing, but just two verses out of a discourse that he was giving in John chapter 5. And in verse 19, Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. Jesus said, Whatever the Father does is what I do. And then later in this same chapter, verse 30, he says, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. Some people have interpreted this as Jesus somehow or another claiming for himself less than deity, saying, I can't do anything of myself. It's actually just the opposite. What he's doing is describing his complete oneness with God the Father that he could not operate independent of him. They were one. It's what we call the Trinity, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. They manifested in three separate ways, but and we don't totally understand it, but they were one. And Jesus was expressing His oneness with God, that He was so one with His Father that He couldn't operate independent of Him. So the reason I bring this out is to say Jesus said that in John chapter 14, if you have seen Me, you have seen the Father. Not talking about just the physical body, but if you have seen the way He acts, the things that He said, the way that He operated in love and stuff, you are seeing the Father. It also says over in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, it says, God who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by His Son, whom He hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. And look at this in verse 3, who being the brightness of his glory, this is speaking of Jesus, was the brightness of the Father's glory and the express image of his person 
and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. But I wanted to point out that Jesus, it says, is the express image of the Father's person. That word express means he is a perfect representation, an exact representation, not vague, not uh, left something out, but everything that the Father is was expressed through Jesus. And then Jesus, you put that together where he says, I can't do anything of myself. Whatever I see the Father do, that's what I'm doing. I am totally dependent upon him. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. You put all of this together and it says that Jesus showed us the Father and who he was and he did everything. So what did Jesus do? Did Jesus ever make anybody sick? Never. There is not one single example of Jesus making people sick. And yet we've got entire denominations today who will say that it's God's will for you to be sick. God did this to humble you, to break you, to bring you to the end of yourself. Let me just put a little parenthetical phrase here. Don't forget where I'm going. But it is true that when we get sick and things get out of control and we are no longer on top of things, there's a lot of people that turn to the Lord through tragedy. But don't blame God for the tragedy. You know, if I go beat my head against a wall and I quit, and I say, man, it feels better not to beat my head against the wall. I'll never do that again. Well, I could learn something through that. But don't blame God for making me beat my head against the wall. Don't blame God for the sickness. God did not put sickness on people, but yet he could use it. You know, there was an instance where my son, Joshua, my oldest son, he was one year old and I was living in Seagaville, Texas. I was pastoring a church there and it was really hot in Texas in the summer. I had a job making a little bit of money and I was loading lumber on this big old truck. And my son just loved these huge old semi trucks. He was so excited. He wanted to get up into that truck and play, but it was hot. And I told him, no, he couldn't get up in the truck and play. But anyway, he was running around. He was hot, he was sweaty, and it came time for his nap. And I had to keep working. And so he started to lay down in the dirt. This was in the dirt that we, it was in a lumber yard and it was just dirt. And he started to lay down. He'd been sweaty. He would have been caked with dirt. I knew Jamie wouldn't like that. And so anyway, I allowed him to get up into the cab of this truck. I rolled the windows down and just allowed him to get into the cab of this truck. But when he got up in there, he revived because now he was in this truck and he was excited. So he was leaning out the window and looking in the side mirror and waving at me as I was loading this lumber. And I told him a couple of times, I said, Joshua, lay down and go to sleep. You can't lean out this window. And uh, he just kept doing it. And finally, I even gave him a smack and I said, you need to lay down and go to sleep. And he wouldn't do it. He leaned out of that window. He fell out of that cab of that truck. And that cab of that truck was over my head. So it was over six foot tall. He fell out, hit his eye on the running board and got a black eye, landed on his head. And so I went running up there and grabbed him and prayed over him. When he quit crying, I said, now, Joshua, this is what I was telling you. You can't lean out this window. You'll hurt yourself. Lay down and go to sleep. And you know, he learned something. And he laid down and he went to sleep and he didn't do it anymore. And so I used that bad experience to teach him something. And he learned something. But if he would have been like a lot of Christians today, he would have gone out and told all his little friends, my dad is so wonderful that he pushed me out of the cab of that truck and gave me a black eye and nearly broke my neck and did these things to teach me to obey him. No, I didn't do any of that stuff. I did everything I could to stop him from doing it. But when he came, when he finally uh, you know, came to me and was looking for some kind of comfort. I used that situation to teach him something. God can use sickness. God can use tragedy to teach you something, but that doesn't mean that God caused it. God is a good God. And in James chapter 1, it says, every good and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, in whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. That's old English for saying that there's no exceptions to this. 
GOD IS THE GOD OF GOOD GIFTS. JOHN CHAPTER 10, VERSE 10 SAYS THAT THE THIEF COMES TO STEAL, TO KILL, AND TO DESTROY, BUT I AM COME THAT YOU MIGHT HAVE LIFE AND THAT YOU MIGHT HAVE IT MORE ABUNDANTLY. IF IT'S FROM THE DEVIL, IT'S BAD. IF IT'S, if it's FROM GOD, IT'S GOOD. SO YOU COULD SAY IF IT'S BAD, IT'S THE DEVIL. IF IT'S GOOD, IT'S GOD. AND YET THERE ARE RELIGIOUS PEOPLE TODAY TEACHING THAT GOD PUT THIS SICKNESS ON YOU TO TEACH YOU SOMETHING. YOU CAN'T SEE THAT IN JESUS' MINISTRY. AGAIN, JESUS IS THE EXPRESS IMAGE OF THE FATHER. JESUS DID ONLY WHAT HE SAW HIS FATHER DO. HE WAS SO DEPENDENT UPON HIM, HE COULDN'T OPERATE INDEPENDENT OF GOD. IF IT WAS GOD'S WILL TO PUT SICKNESS ON PEOPLE AND MAKE THEM SICK, IF THAT WAS THE WAY THAT GOD IS, THEN JESUS DID NOT REPRESENT GOD COMPLETELY. AND I CAN GUARANTEE YOU THAT IS NOT A TRUTH. JESUS WAS THE EXPRESS IMAGE OF THE FATHER. IF YOU'VE SEEN JESUS, YOU'VE SEEN THE FATHER. AND JESUS NEVER MADE ANYBODY SICK. JESUS NEVER TOLD ANYBODY, YOU HAVEN'T SUFFERED ENOUGH. YOU NEED TO SUFFER MORE, AND THEN I'LL HEAL YOU LATER ON. JESUS NEVER LAID HANDS ON ANYBODY AND GAVE THEM SICKNESS. YOU CAN FIND EXAMPLES LIKE IN THE SIXTH CHAPTER OF THE BOOK OF MARK WHERE JESUS WENT INTO HIS HOMETOWN AND IT SAYS IN VERSE 4, JESUS SAID UNTO THEM, A PROPHET IS NOT WITHOUT HONOR, BUT IN HIS OWN COUNTRY AND AMONG HIS OWN KIN AND IN HIS OWN HOUSE. AND HE COULD THERE DO NO MIGHTY WORK SAVE THAT HE LAID HIS HANDS UPON A FEW SICK FOLK AND HE HEALED THEM AND HE MARVELED BECAUSE OF THEIR UNBELIEF. IT DIDN'T SAY HE WOULDN'T DO ANY MIGHTY WORK. IT SAYS HE COULDN'T DO IT. HE WAS LIMITED BY THEIR UNBELIEF. IF YOU PUT THIS TOGETHER WITH MATTHEW CHAPTER 13, VERSE 58, WHICH IS THE EXACT SAME INSTANCE, JUST WORDED A LITTLE DIFFERENTLY, IT SAYS IT WAS BECAUSE OF THEIR UNBELIEF THAT HE COULDN'T DO MANY MIGHTY WORKS THERE. AND SO JESUS, THERE'S TIMES THAT HE DIDN'T HEAL EVERY PERSON, BUT IT WASN'T BECAUSE THAT WAS GOD'S WILL. IT WAS BECAUSE THE PEOPLE WOULDN'T RECEIVE IT. THE PEOPLE DIDN'T HONOR HIM. AND IT'S THE SAME TODAY. THERE ARE PEOPLE, THERE'S MULTITUDES OF PEOPLE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM RIGHT NOW THAT YOU AREN'T WELL. AND YOU'RE THINKING, IF IT'S GOD'S WILL TO HEAL ME, WELL, THEN WHY AREN'T I HEALED? WELL, IS IT GOD'S WILL TO SAVE EVERYBODY? SECOND PETER CHAPTER 3, VERSE 9 SAYS, GOD IS NOT WILLING THAT ANY SHOULD PERISH, BUT THAT ALL SHOULD COME TO REPENTANCE. I MEAN, I DON'T KNOW HOW YOU CAN MAKE THAT ANY CLEAR. IT IS NOT, HE IS NOT WILLING THAT ANY SHOULD PERISH. THAT MEANS THAT IT IS HIS WILL FOR EVERYONE TO BE SAVED. AND YET THEY AREN'T SAVED. IS THAT BECAUSE GOD'S WILL DOESN'T COME TO PASS? WELL, IT DOESN'T COME TO PASS AUTOMATICALLY. YOU HAVE TO BELIEVE TO RECEIVE. IF YOU DOUBT, YOU DO WITHOUT. IT SAYS IN EPHESIANS CHAPTER 2, VERSE 8, THAT YOU'RE SAVED BY GRACE THROUGH FAITH AND THAT NOT OF YOURSELVES. YOU AREN'T SAVED BY GRACE ALONE. THAT'S WHAT GOD DOES. GRACE IS WHAT GOD DID FOR US THROUGH JESUS. BUT FAITH IS HOW WE RESPOND. FAITH IS OUR POSITIVE RESPONSE TO GOD'S GRACE. AND SO YOU AREN'T SAVED BY GRACE ALONE. IF YOU WERE, IT SAYS IN TITUS CHAPTER 2, VERSE 11, THAT THE GRACE OF GOD THAT BRINGS SALVATION HAS APPEARED UNTO ALL MEN. IF GRACE ALONE SAVED YOU, THEN ALL MEN WOULD BE SAVED. BUT THEY AREN'T. WHY? BECAUSE YOU HAVE TO BELIEVE IN ORDER TO RECEIVE. ROMANS CHAPTER 5, VERSE 2 SAYS, WE HAVE ACCESS BY FAITH INTO THIS GRACE WHEREIN WE STAND. YOU ACCESS, YOU GAIN ADMISSION TO GRACE THROUGH FAITH. GOD'S GRACE IS THERE. GOD BY GRACE HAS HEALED EVERY PERSON. EVERY PERSON WATCHING THIS PROGRAM RIGHT NOW HAS HAD JESUS DIE FOR YOUR SICKNESS. IT IS A PAID THING. You, your, YOUR HEALING HAS ALREADY BEEN PURCHASED, BUT YOU GAIN ACCESS THROUGH FAITH. AND I'M TELLING YOU, A FAITH KILLER IS WHAT RELIGION SAYS THAT, WELL, GOD WANTS YOU TO BE SICK. AND I GUARANTEE YOU, IF YOU EVER SWALLOW THAT LIE, WELL, THEN YOUR OWN CONSCIENCE IS GOING TO CONDEMN YOU AND SHOW YOU THAT YOU HAVEN'T DONE EVERYTHING RIGHT, AND YOU WILL FEEL GUILTY, AND YOU'LL SAY, WELL, IT'S NOT THAT I DOUBT THAT GOD CAN DO IT, I JUST DOUBT THAT HE WILL DO IT BECAUSE YOUR OWN HEART CONDEMNS YOU. YOU AREN'T PERFECT. BUT THE GOOD NEWS IS YOU DON'T GET WHAT YOU DESERVE. YOU GET WHAT YOU BELIEVE. IF YOU COULD UNDERSTAND IT, JESUS DIED FOR THE UNGODLY, AND HE PROVIDED HEALING FOR YOU, AND IT'S YOURS. IT'S BEEN DONE, BUT YOU HAVE TO BELIEVE. AND IF YOU THINK THAT, WELL, GOD MAY WANT ME TO BE SICK, MAYBE I HAVEN'T LEARNED MY LESSON, MAYBE THIS IS GOD'S PUNISHMENT, THAT IS JUST A FAITH KILLER. 
You've got to start with this point that Jesus is the express image of God the Father. He only does what He saw His Father do. He did everything that He saw His Father do. Put that together with Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with power and with the Holy Ghost who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. All. It was good. He went around healing all that were oppressed of the devil. If you waver in this thing that God wants you well, and if you think that this is just your punishment, that you are being perfected somehow or another through your sufferings, and so therefore God wants you to suffer, if you think that God doesn't heal anymore, if you buy into this dispensationalism where they say that God died with the last apostle, of course, the problem with that is there's still apostles today. But there are entire denominations who will doubt that there are apostles today and they'll say that the supernatural manifestations of God's power don't function today. None of that stuff is true. And if you believe any of that, well, then it'll keep you from believing that you receive when you pray. Mark 11, 24, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them. You've got to believe at that moment. And in order to do that, you've got to know that God wants you well. How do you come to that place? Well, one of the things for me that did it, I examined the life of Jesus. And since Jesus represented God perfectly and showed us exactly who God was and how God acts, and I see that Jesus never failed to heal a single person, He healed all that were oppressed of the devil, not oppressed of God. When I saw that, I said, then I just have to accept the representation that Jesus gave us. You know, I was taught that God put sickness on you. Man, if I had time, I could tell you some stories. I had it prophesied that I was going to be a human vegetable for eight years. And I'm not going to take the time to tell you all of it, but it was supernatural. I had a woman walk up to me 300 miles from where I lived and speak to me and prophesy over me and say things that nobody could, knew, could know. And anyway, that led to me basically getting this prophecy that I was going to be a human vegetable for eight years. And I was so ignorant of the Word of God that I was that close to receiving it. But finally, I saw that this is just the devil, and I rebuked it. And I had supernatural things happen that made me hesitate and believe that it was God's will for healing. But when I got hold of the truth, it removed those chains, those shackles from me. I started believing God, and man, I got healed, and I have seen miraculous things happen. I've seen people raised from the dead, blind eyes open, deaf ears open, and this isn't just for me. This isn't just for people that are in full-time ministry, a super saint. This is for Joe Blow, Jane Doe, Christian. Every one of us is supposed to be walking in supernatural divine health. That's what Jesus showed. Jesus showed us the will of the Father, and He never made anybody sick. He went around healing all that were oppressed of the devil. And God wants you well today. Praise God. Well, I just know in my heart right now that God is speaking to people all over the world, and this is the first time you've ever heard it presented this way with this much confidence and authority. But I'm saying these things on the authority of the Word. I've got many, many, many more scriptures that I'm going to be sharing with you, but God has spoken to some of you today, and you just need to embrace this, that God, you do want me well. Now, you may not, that may not be everything you know or need to know in order to get that healing manifest, but this is a first step. You've got to quit doubting that God wants you well. You've got to quit embracing sickness as something that is sent from God as punishment or either a blessing. You've got to get over that. You know, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 through 68 is the blessings and the curses of the law. Verses 1 through 14 are all of the blessings that will come upon you, and some of those blessings are that you will not have sickness, that you will be healed and cured of all sickness and disease. In verses 15 through 68, it lists what the curses are 
And some of those curses are that every sickness, every disease which is not written in the book, or you could say that isn't even named yet, if there's a new virus that comes out, anything that comes your way, those are curses. So Deuteronomy 28 is just like if you had a blackboard and on one side you write blessings, on the other side you write curses, verses 1 through 48 are blessings. It's called a blessing to be healed. Over in verses 15 through 68, it's the curses, and it's a curse to be sick, to have the bots, the mildew, emrods, all of these kind of things. The Bible says sickness is a curse. And Galatians 3.13 says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. Jesus redeemed us from Deuteronomy 28, verses 15 through 68, so that the blessing of Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 through 14, could come on us by faith. You have had healing purchased for you, but you have to believe it. You have to reject these lies that make you embrace sickness as somehow or another being a gift from God or a punishment from God, and you've got to start resisting it. James chapter 4, verse 7 says, Submit yourselves therefore unto God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The word resist means to actively fight against. And you cannot be actively resisting the devil, re actively resisting sickness, if you think that God somehow or another has a part to play in it. If you think that God is doing this either to punish you or to bless you, well, then you'll wind up submitting to that. You cannot submit to God and resist the devil if you are sitting there embracing that sickness. You have, to, you have to submit to healing and resist the sickness. And I tell you, I've got so much more to share with you about this. Let me just point out that we have our phone center open 24-7 now, and we have the address or the phone number right there on the screen. And we've got people that are wanting to pray with you. Some of you have had the Lord speak to you today. Faith has come by hearing the Word of God, and you're ready to believe, and you need to call and not only ask for the product that we're putting out, but you need to get prayer, and we will see miracles. We will see many, many people healed. Today is your day to receive your healing. So please call that number that you see on your screen. And when you call, remember that we've got a lot of product. I've got this free little booklet entitled, God Wants You Well, and uh, this is just a summary of some of my teaching. And then I have this book entitled, God Won't You Well. I've got a study guide on that. And we've got CDs and DVDs. We've got this little USB that has, uh, I think it's 12 of my different teachings on here, somewhere around 60 or 70 hours worth of teaching in that. We've got these uh, healing journeys that are video testimonies of people that have been miraculously healed. And then we have this healing university, which is over 60 hours worth of teaching, not only by, by me, but also by a lot of our instructors in our Karis Bible College. And it includes all of the healing journeys are on here. There's group discussions. We've got a lot of stuff to try and help you get healed. So please call. Uh, please respond today and join me again tomorrow for another Gospel Truth. Karis Bible College will help you discover who you are in Christ and lead you to a deeper understanding of your God-given calling and purpose. There are some of you here wondering about, should I do this? If you have a desire to be here, it's because God put that desire in your heart. To learn more about Karis Bible College, come to Campus Days. Meet Karis instructors and sit under the Word of God. Join us for Campus Days, April 6th through the 8th in Woodland Park, Colorado. Discover that healing is part of God's provision for you when you get Andrew's teaching titled, God Wants You Well. As a special offer, Andrew is giving away the God Wants You Well booklet as his gift to you absolutely free. This offer is limited to one free booklet per household and is available in the US, UK, Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free booklet. God Wants You Well is available in a book, companion study guide, and as a newly updated CD or DVD version of this classic teaching. Also, Andrew is offering his Healing USB. 
This valuable USB contains 38 hours of Andrew's teachings related to the subject of healing, including living in God's best, you've already got it, spirit, soul, and body, plus many more. Each of these resources are available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download, absolutely free from our website. Be empowered to receive healing and minister healing to others when you get Healing University. This resource delivers the power of the gospel in 48 lessons, six question and answer sessions, and practical stories and video testimonies in each lesson. This box set includes three workbooks, an audio USB, and a personal access code to the online videos and printable PDFs. Receive your Healing University today for $499. Andrew would like to extend a special thank you to the Grace Partners of Andrew Womack Ministries. Your gifts make it possible for us to broadcast the message of God's unconditional love and grace all around the world. Because of your contributions, we've been able to put free ministry resources into the hands of millions in need. If you're not already a Grace Partner, we ask you to pray about becoming one today. You can become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. I want to remind you that the Lord encouraged me to designate 2022 as the year of the Bible. And I'm encouraging people to read through the Bible in one year. This is a Bible reading plan that we use in our Caris Bible College that we will give to you as a free gift. You can also go to our website and download this. And there is a place on the website for you to sign a pledge. It's not where we're going to dun you for anything or shame you, but just make a commitment to read through the Bible in one year. So check it out, our Bible reading plan on awmi.net. One day, David, death will be no more. Sin will be destroyed forever. There will be no more tears, no more pain. On that day, I will dwell in the heart of every man, woman, and child who chooses to see me. That is worth it. I see you. I've got some great news to share with you, and that is that we have now expanded our phone center hours to 24-7. Anytime you want to call us, we're going to be open to receive your calls. We've been expanding gradually, and this is a goal that I've been shooting at, and I'm excited because, you know, sometimes problems, needs don't just wait until business hours to happen. You may need to call in the middle of the night and we can now serve you 24-7 on our Andrew Womack Ministries helpline. 